Despite the economic downturn, recent extreme weather events have helped keep climate change on the boardroom agenda. This is according to the 2012 results of the Carbon Disclosure Project, which provides insight into how seriously South African companies are considering climate change. Paul Dickinson, chairman and founder of CDP, joins us now for more detail on this. Uh, Paul, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. First up, how do you go about actually evaluating and monitoring how seriously South African companies are taking an issue like this? Well, South African companies have been reporting to, through, uh, to their investors through CDP for six years now. So there's a lot of experience built up in the business community here, in the investment community, in looking at the responses. There are complex issues about corporate strategy, uh, taking advantage of emissions reduction opportunities, building new products and services and innovation. But also you have one tonne of CO2 equivalent, which means you can mathematically represent exposure to the risks and opportunities from climate change. Mm -hmm. Paul, the, um, the, the first co um, paragraph of your report says the following. In a context where investor confidence in South Africa is under pressure, South African transparency and performance in the investor-led initiative, the CDP project, uh, report rather, is a shining light. And we've got the second highest internationally um, uh, monitored response rate of 78%. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that we're not carbon offenders, does it? It just means that we're responding to the initiative that we've been asked to respond to. We're all carbon offenders, I think, and we've all got an opportunity uh, to build um, market share and margin providing solutions to climate change. And just as you pointed out, extreme weather events are bringing this to the attention of uh, citizens, consumers and investors. Uh, but I think what we have in uh, what you have in South Africa quite uniquely is the most extraordinary leadership position. Uh, second uh, leading nation in the world after the UK in terms of the responses of companies. Uh, in terms of the uh, so-called emerging economies, BRICS, uh, uh, you lead by a significant margin. Brazil with 63%, uh, and then you come to India with just a 25% response rate. China 23%, Russia 8%. Mm -hmm. So clearly, South African industry gets climate change and is looking to make money from it, and that's impressive. So, what are we getting more right than others? I think it's planning. I think it's understanding the direction of travel. You know. Um, once again, referring to extreme weather events, these have been going on for a long time and there's an increasing recognition by the public and by investors that a low carbon economy has significant benefits. There's going to be more taxation and regulation. But you know, if you want to look at it in a very simple way, you can say carbon is expenditure on energy, okay? Mm -hmm. And how well you're managing your expenditure on energy is directly linked to your profitability. Energy prices are rising, they're volatile. Good management leads to a better business. Mm -hmm. Um, just talking about the making money aspect of it, I mean, I thought for a moment that suddenly South Africa, uh, South African companies were becoming all uh, warm and fuzzy, but clearly not. There's a, there's a capitalistic element to this. Can you explain in layman terms how we do make money? I mean, apart from the taxation element that you've just spoken about. I mean, the <laughs> people always talk about warm and fuzzy with regard to climate change, but, you know, uh, Mitt Romney wouldn't be saying it was very warm and fuzzy that an extreme weather event cost him the US election, most likely, if you look at the comments of Mayor Bloomberg and Governor Cuomo. So what we have here is business increasingly recognizing uh, that people are voting with their money when they invest, uh, when they purchase, uh, they want to prefer uh, low carbon goods and services. South African businesses have a long tradition of uh, forward planning, of understanding that they have a responsibility in society, and they're good at turning that into business opportunities. Examples include, uh, you know, being the most efficient mining company means that you're actually producing materials um, per ton at a lower cost in energy and that's good for business yeah uh, when it comes to sectors that are doing better than others I mean how how are we ranking the sector performances uh, locally well I think there are some reasonably energy intensive sectors in South Africa which uh, it means that there's perhaps also a, a greater ability to comprehend this but I'm going to draw one data point uh, the scoring for the quality of disclosure uh, is up to 82 percent among South African companies now that is actually above uh, 77 out of 100 for the 500 largest companies in the world mm -hmm. so isn't that extraordinary that the that uh, the uh, 78 of the JSC 100 of the reporting are actually producing better responses than the 500 largest companies in the world there is a there is a, a magic in South African business that it truly understands and grasps this issue.
It's very encouraging, of course, all, all, all this data, but uh, South Africa, although it is uh, a major economy and becoming more major, I hope, in, in the future, when you, when you um, quote those statistics, those appalling statistics, Russia, India, uh, China, I mean, our other uh, fellow BRICS, what are you doing about that? What can people do about that in order to follow the South African example? Because I would, would have thought that China would be, and India, would be the first two that should be uh, complying with the initiative. Well, I think that the, uh, you know, you're in very good company. Some other countries that show the kind of leadership we're seeing in South Africa include the great economy of Korea, uh, which is fast emerging and increasingly gearing its industrial development uh, towards providing products and services for a low carbon world. Mm -hmm. uh, the great corporations in the United States are seeing significant advantage. Leading European companies are also uh, planning their strategy around delivering low carbon products and services. You know, climate change is like the internet. It gets bigger every year. It never goes away and you have to learn to make money from it. And so I think there's a correlation between uh, some of the most advanced uh, economies that are able to deliver the highest uh, margins in terms of products and services. Uh, and that's where South Africa is positioning itself amongst that group.